Hi, my name is Byron Martin here at Logis Greenhouses, and today we're going to be talking about what we do with our plants once we've received them and they've acclimated to the growing situation. When the plants are arrived, we want to look at the moisture level, as we mentioned, and make sure they're watered. And then plants that are tight in the pot or large for the size of the container need to be moved up or repotted. And this can be done at pretty much any time of the year. For house plants, even though they don't grow a lot in the winter, most homes stay above 60 degrees, so the root system can remain active even during the winter time. This little strap actually is not outgrowing the pot, and it could actually stay in this container for a while, but um, being so small uh, and the fact that it's in active growth, I would probably repot it. And what we're doing is we're taking a two inch pot or two and a half inch pot and we're going to move it up into a four. I'm using a clay pot but you don't need to with streps. They can actually take plastic just as well. And so we just want to simply bring it up. And the rule of thumb is generally about two inches. So if you're in a two and a half you go to a four. If you're in a four you go to a six. The fact is that plants could go from a two to an eight inch pot but problems can arise from that. Not always. Sometimes it works out fine, but problems can arise from that, mainly because there's this big mass of wet soil and this little plant sitting in the middle of it, and the plant actually can't manage the soil moisture there. And under distress conditions, which could be wintertime, as we go into the low light when plants slow down, root rot can actually start on plants, particularly those that are susceptible to it. So it's better to move them up gradually. The other issue that you'll find when you are overpotting is that that root system that you have, and we'll probably try this um, rose here, that root system that you have, see this is a fairly good root system, it's not actually pot bound, but when that's put into a very large container and the soil is watered thoroughly, that plant can sit there under high light in some stress, transpiration stress, meaning there's moisture being pulled off through, the, through low humidity or higher temperatures. This root ball will dry right down and the outside moist soil will remain moist. The plant goes into a wilt. The gardener looks at it and goes, my soil's wet, I just watered it. Yet the plant is under tremendous amount of drought stress because it hasn't made contact or capillary contact the so this soil with the soil that you just put in. And people actually lose plants because of that. They go into a bad wilt, they look like they should have been watered and they're not. Always recommend if you've got a plant that has been repotted, it was pot bound or very tight root system, put into a large container, water it again. It's also good to know those plants that actually have high susceptibility to root diseases and those that don't. We have information on our website about the plant and whether it has root disease or not. I mean, it's one of those things that once you know it, you'll know how to deal with the plant better. So here we are with our little strep. We moved it up two inches and always when you're done repotting, you want to uh, make sure you give the plant a good drink. And a drink is actually allowing the water to saturate the entire potting medium and actually have a little bit of water run out the drainage hole. That actually begins that contact of capillary reaction between the two different soils once you've settled that water in the soil around it. You can see there's a little bit of water there that's dripping out of the bottom of the pot and put it in a saucer so it doesn't uh, ruin the home. When we look at these other plants, adeniums are very adaptable to very tight conditions, although this is going to need repotting. However, this plant is actually going into its dormancy and it's at the end of its growing season. And I wouldn't repot this, I would leave this be. Repotting at this time of year isn't gonna help it any and may even harm it in terms of too much moisture at the root system during dormancy. This little fig that we got, this is the one that got run over by the truck. I would just leave that be, uh, make sure that it has enough moisture. As I said, it's at the end of its growing cycle, so it's going to go into a dormancy. Here we have a philodendron. This philodendron has been potted up and is in good shape to last for probably well into next year as it grows. So this doesn't need repotting, simply putting in the growing area and pay attention to your watering on it. We had a phalaenopsis here. You can see this is well rooted in the potting media. 
unless you're moving to the same mix, this is a bark mix, I would actually leave this be. It's got a spike on, it's going into flour. I would put that into a container rather than repotting it. Set it into another pot, like a jardinier. This is, can be worked as that or an orchid pot. And there it can stay until springtime when you're going to repot it and then you can move it up into another container. Just don't overpot them, you know, they, they just need a couple inches and that's it. And Phalaenopsis can stay in same size containers for a very long period of time. They really don't get that much bigger than this. So here we have our Rhizomatus begonia moth or stewart. This definitely needs repotting. Rhizomatus are still growing at this time of year but are going to go into their flowering cycle and their growth really doesn't ever stop. I mean, there's foliage growth and then there's flowering growth and then it goes back into um, foliage again. And the root systems uh, remain active. We always grow, keep our begonias above 60 degrees. So the root systems remain active. So here we have some damaged leaves. I just take off those things that are broken, but pretty much the plant's in good shape. Uh, we take it out, you see the soil's moist, so that was um, on our shipping process. Now we're using a plastic pot right now. Begonias actually like clay, and um, although they will grow in plastic fine, generally we grow most of our mother plants in clay pots. That gives a quick dry down. Begonias like this dry, wet, dry, wet cycle. Um, and so we're simply going to put that into the bigger pot. That's uh, going from a four inch to a six. And Yellow up, you put a little bit in the bottom. This is a kind of a deep plastic one, so um, we had to put a little soil in the bottom and then we give it a good tap to settle it. And she's potted. And then, as I mentioned, you want to make sure you give it a good drink. Drink enough to saturate the mix all the way through. Here we go. So we've got water dripping out of the bottom and now that plant is ready to go into the growing area. Being a begonia, it usually just goes in an east to west exposure. Those are optimum for growing begonias. This time of year, south would actually work as the sunlight is quite low, but this can be put back into its growing area. Thanks for watching. There's a little bit of information how to repot and what to repot when you receive your order from Logis. Next, we're going to be talking about light exposure and fertilizer needs for those plants.